Hi everyone, thank you very much for stopping by and returning to the old world today. We're talking the characters available to the Empire of Man. And I think there's some of them which absolutely leap off the page as being obvious selections. You've got the Wizard Lord, for example, a level 3, potentially level 4 wizard, able to most easily cast the most powerful spells from your chosen lore. And also most able to effectively shut down the enemy magical attacks and keep your own troops safe. Some would argue, I think, that the Wizard Lord is an obvious pick. You've also got the combat characters, the generals, the captains, BSB. You've got the Grand Masters, Chapter Masters, etc. The models which are giving your units, the combat units, that extra little bit of punch, helping them break through the enemy lines and get your positive result on the battlefield. But there's one character lying within there, pretty cheap, 45 points, that I think is the hidden gem for the Empire Army. And that is the humble engineer. So why do I think the engineer is so useful? Well, first, let's have a look at what they do. And for your 45 points, you get a single model that allows once per turn you to reroll an artillery dice, or if you're using ballistic skill to hit a target, reroll at a hit roll instead. So that is either or. And re-rolls in Warhammer the Old World, they're actually pretty hard to come by, so therefore pretty useful. Now I've played some games with both Empire and Dwarves, and in all those games I've been making use of artillery. For the games involving the Empire, I've used an engineer, I didn't for the Dwarf Force, although they do have access to a very similar model. And I have to say, I really noticed when the engineer wasn't there. It wasn't so much as I noticed when it was there. Yes, you got on your re-roll. Yes, it meant my guns didn't necessarily blow themselves up and were able to take out some targets instead. But when they weren't there, my war machines weren't hitting. You really saw the difference. I'm minded, for those of you who have a sporting bent and if you'll excuse the slight diversion, of a rugby player called Richard Hill. He used to play for England and was part of the World Cup winning squad back in 2003. And he was one of the flankers playing in the pack. Now, Richard Hill played alongside some absolute legends of the game. Johnny Wilkinson, Jason Leonard, Martin Johnson, Lawrence Delalio, Matt Dawson, just to name but a few. And he didn't really get an awful lot of attention from the commentators when he was playing. You, There were times you'd barely know he was even on the pitch at all. Until, that is, he wasn't on the pitch. Maybe he wasn't selected, maybe he was injured, maybe he'd been taken off as a substitute. But then England changed. And suddenly they weren't getting the same success at the breakdown as you'd just been getting used to seeing. They weren't winning as much of their opposition's ball after a tackle had been made. The dark crafts, the battling under a pile of bodies to secure the ball, far from the eyes of the crowd and the referee, the humble hard work of Richard Hill made a huge difference to the team performance. And that is very much how I see the role of the Imperial engineer. No, he's not flashy. No, he's not going to lead a unit of knights to glory, smashing through the enemy lines, causing them to rout with panic spreading along the lines. But what he will do is keep those guns firing. And if you're an Empire player, you've probably got guns. They're probably the way you're hoping to deal with any art enemy artillery and to whip some wounds off all the dragons we're hearing so much about to try and keep your opponent honest, to pin them back and give you a presence on the battlefield that you can then try and use to manoeuvre your way into charges and combats in your own terms. For me, the engineer is very quickly becoming that hidden gem within the Empire army list, a unit that you really need if you're taking a bunch of guns.
Now, obviously, Warhammer the Old World is very much a new game. It's a new way of playing, and we're still all very much learning how our armies work. And maybe you've picked up an idea of a particular character build you find particularly useful. Maybe it's just out and out strong, or maybe it offers some subtle support which helps other units around it just become that a little bit more effective in your goal of ultimate victory. If you've identified some of these models, do let me know about it in the comments down below, what they are, how you've built them, and why you found them useful. I'll be really interested to see what the collective thinking is on these, because I'm very much happy to try things out in my own army as I look to build my own knowledge of how the Empire works and to start trying to achieve some success on the field, certainly consistent success. All that remains for me to say is thank you very much for listening. I am Return to the Old World. If you've enjoyed this video and others like it as I transition from speculating what the game might look like to better understanding the game and working out what works best for me, do consider dropping a subscription. Even if you're not watching loads of videos going forward, it is the best way to help a small channel such as this one. A like would also be much appreciated. Once again, thank you very much for listening. Have a great day.